Welcome to our lecture online. Now we have an interesting problem here. We have a soap bubble. The mass of the bubble itself is 0.12 grams and it's filled with hydrogen. Now I'm not sure how you would fill a soap bubble with hydrogen, but let's assume you could. Then what would the volume of that bubble need to be in order for it to float in air? And notice the density of hydrogen is 0.000 did I say enough zeros? Let's see, 0 0.00009 grams per cubic centimeters, and the density for air is 0 0.00129 grams per cubic centimeter. So obviously hydrogen is less dense than air, and it should therefore float. Hmm, let's see here. How do we figure that out? Well, we need to think of all the forces. Obviously we have a force pulling down on it, so we can say that um, the weight of the soap bubble itself and then the mg of the hydrogen both of those will be pulling downward and uh, then of course we have a buoyancy force which we have to figure out and if everything works well then the buoyancy force should equal the weight of the soap bubble bubble plus the weight of the hydrogen inside the bubble so i'll go mg sub b for the bubble and mg sub h2 for the hydrogen. All right, now we need to figure out the buoyancy force of the bubble. And of course, the buoyancy force is equal to the weight of the displaced liquid. In this case, the liquid would be the air. So the weight of the air that's being displaced, the mg of the air. And of course, since we know that the density is equal to the mass divided by the volume, the mass can be written as the product of those two. So density times volume times G of the displaced air. All right. So now that we know that, we can go ahead and set up an equation. We know that the buoyancy force must equal the weight of the bubble plus the weight of the hydrogen. So let's go ahead and plug in the equation. So on the left side we have the buoyancy force, the density, the volume, and the G for air equals the mg of the bubble. So that would be, uh, well we can leave it as mg of the bubble. We know what that is equal to. And then we add to that the weight of the hydrogen inside. And so that would be the rho Vg of the hydrogen. Notice that the volume has to be the same for both. And that's what we're looking for. We're looking for the volume. So let's go ahead and move that over here. So we have the density, volume, G for the air, minus density, V, G for the hydrogen, equals the weight of the bubble. Now we can factor out a V. So we have V times density. Well, actually, you know what? Probably would be cleaner if we also factor out the g, because that's the same for both, times the density of air minus the density of the hydrogen equals the weight of the bubble. And so finally, the volume is going to be equal to, now notice we have a g on both sides, so that cancels out. And that leaves us with the mass of the bubble divided by uh, the density of the air minus the density of the hydrogen. It really isn't any different from what we would do with a hot air balloon. It has the same concept, but here it's for much smaller units, of course. The mass of the bubble is going to be equal to 0 0.12 grams. So I think we're going to leave this in CGS units, so the volume is going to be in cubic centimeters, and divide that by the density of the air, which is 0 0.00129 grams per cubic centimeter just write it like that, minus 0 0.00009 grams per cubic centimeter. You can then clearly see that the result is going to be in terms of cubic centimeters. So let's figure that out. I have 0 0.00129 minus 0 0.00009 and the inverse times 0.12 and hmm something is not quite right 0.1 let me try it again multiply it times 0.12 ha see I did 
suspect an error there. So the volume equals 100 cubic centimeters. And when you're not sure, when you get an answer, you're not sure, you quickly can do a rough order of estimation. I was quickly checking the densities of air versus hydrogen, and it looked like it was about the right ratio. And so, yes, I did punch in the wrong button on the calculator, but this is now the correct answer. The soap bubble would have to be 100 cubic centimeters for it to be able to float in air. And that is how that's done.